Tibuka. Um, this is from Atharva Veda. Om Apsuhu Antaha Amritam Apsu Bheshajam Apat Ut Prashisthibi Ashwa Bhavat Vajina Gava Bhavat Vajina He Prabhu, Jo Jal Hamare Jeevan Ka Adhar Hai Vah Hame Shuddh Mile Or Vah Hamare Liye Amrit Mai Ho Us Jal Se Hamare Vanaspatiya Adi Phoolen Phale Hamare Pashu Gau Ashwa Adi Uttam Guno Wale Ho और स्वस्थ रहें अमृत जिसको कहते हैं मिले न जग में काहे यदि हो उसको ढूंढना देखो जल के माहे जीवित करता जीव को प्यासा हो जो मीत उस बिन जीना को सकत सदा रहे ये चीत सदा रहे जब शुद्ध जल औषध में गुण होए पशु हमारे स्वस्थ रहें और सबल वे होए धेनु होए या बैल हो हो वा घोड़ा मीत शुद्ध जल से स्वस्थ रहें अथवा दुर्बल चीत जग कहता है जल सुखदाई शुद्ध जल हो हमारा भाई जल को दूषित करना पाप जग में बढ़ता है संताप अग्नि आदि पंच देव कहाँ हैं उन्हें न दूषित हम कर पाए जल है जीवन का आधार होए न उस बिन कुछ भी कार सो दिस इज अवर ड्यूटी Kartavya, to keep these elements clean. And we all know how important the jam is. Okay, <clears throat> let's uh, open our Pashtva uh, Gita. We ended our last class uh, with verse number 71, chapter number 18. Where Rishi Ashtavakar ji said, rules of life dispassion, relinquishment, control of mind. What are all these to one who is of the nature of pure effulgence? And who does not perceive the phenomenal world at all? Okay, so in other words, all these practices, sadhana, they are not for the atma. They are for the body, they are for the mind, they are for the intellect. They are for the ego. Okay? So that's why he said, who does not perceive the phenomenal world at all, who is absorbed in the self constantly. The sadhanas are not for him. Okay, has already reached the goal. So that's why I said that this kind of a person, a yogi, his actions are spontaneous and divine. Divine. And they are what constitute the very standard. And that's what uh, scriptures, uh, they declare as a dharma. Okay. So he doesn't follow dharma. He is dharma. So his conduct is dharma. He is not following dharma. Okay. So he is dissecting the nature of the man of perfection to educate us because we are the students of spirituality. Okay? And so is this royal saint Janaka. Let's start the class with verse number 72. Safurtaha anant rupen prakritim chana pasyata ko bandha ko chava mokshaha Ko harsha, ko vishadita, sufurta, shining, anant rupen, in endless forms. Prakritim, nature. That means this relative existence, this is what nature is. Germans and na pasheta. One who is not seeing this nature, this pluralistic world. In the not seeing. Kuva means where bandha bondage, mokshaha liberation, harshaha joy, vishadita sorrow. Where is bondage? Where is liberation? Where is joy? Where is sorrow? For one who does not perceive nature, 
the relative existence. But see is only the self shining in endless forms. Okay. So this kind of a person has become a Paramahans. Okay. You remember we often talk about these two terms, Hans and Paramahans. Who is a Hans? Hans is who can see God in this world. That is a Hans. Symbolically, they say Hans can differentiate between the water and the milk. So that really means the divinity and the Prakriti. That is a Hans. Paramahans is a who doesn't see the Prakriti at all? He sees only the Brahma. No duality. So this is what he's talking about over here. Because all these terms over here, whether it's a bondage or liberation or the joy or the sorrow, they are to do with the Prakriti. He says, but he sees only the self shining in endless forms. It's nothing but the self, nothing but the Paramatma everywhere. So it's a state of a Paramahansa. See, we as seekers, as Jeeves, we look out through the layers of our Vasanas. That's why we see this world of names and forms. And then we get attached to certain names and certain forms. Or we are revulsed by certain names and certain forms. So we deliberately we divide the world. Likes and dislikes. This is called a deluded ego. So for majority of us, this is all it is. I like this, I don't like this. So this kind of an ego, there is nothing greater, nobler, diviner, more eternal. Because we are looking through the limited self. So ego comes to feel it's a sense of limitation. And that's why it complains about the bondages. Otherwise, where is the bondage? That's what he's saying. If you are not bondage, then where is the liberation? There's not even a talk about it. So it is the ego that grows anxious to liberate itself from the entanglements of its own sorrows. The ego in its identifications with the body is happy or unhappy. And it suffers in a self-created life of joy or sorrow. This is all ego. But the sage who has risen above the ego, and therefore he has transcended his intellect, and he has awakened to the divinity, the self. No polarity at all. So this Rishi is talking about it. That person. It's almost like if a person has the knowledge of the nature of the ocean, can the waves and the bubbles be separate from ocean? The person who has the wisdom of the gold, can the gold ornament it? irrespective of its shapes and beauty, be anything really different from gold? See, these are the examples he has been giving it to us. So we got to use these examples in this area now in order to awaken ourselves. Joys and sorrows are the ultimate results of ignorance. If we are in certain situations, we are jumping up and then we go into the lower cycle. Don't we see that a person who just goes up very easily and down very easily, 
what do we say bipolar personality and we say this is a mental disorder now we got to look at ourselves do these world worldly things worldly objects worldly people do they take our mind also sometimes so up and sometimes so down or do we can we keep a stability lord krishna said the same thing when he talked about yogi how do we recognize a yogi what did he use the word samta samatvam uchyate and this is exactly what uh, rishi ashtavakar ji is saying he says joys and sorrows are the ultimate results of ignorance on the non apprehension of reality we take the misapprehensions to be real we don't know that that's a rope this is non apprehension and we misapprehend that it's a snake we look at this world and we think it's going to give us the joy so lack of apprehension the source of joy only the atma and parmatma this little book which i was reading from before towards the end of the book if you have book guru ji has written two lines over here he has written in sanskrit let me read it to you since most of you know this if we can make our mantra we can understand this ashtavakar gita very clearly just from this two lines dukhatmak dukhatmakam jagat sarvam the whole world dukhatmakam second line is sukhatmakam prabhu charnam so we are looking for the happiness at the wrong place and we just keep on moving in this ups and downs and lose the real goal of life i would say just make a copy of this and then try to look at it try to understand what this great yogi is telling us in two short praises dukhatmakam jagat sarvam he did not say only this jagat or that jagat jagat sarvam and what is a jagat jagat is a which keeps on changing anything which keeps on changing which keeps on moving that's a jagat this body keeps on changing mind keeps on changing objects keep on changing relationships keeps on changing political systems keep on changing mountains keeps on changing planets keeps on changing this is all jagat and we are trying to get happiness from there who is a fool so dukhatmakam jagat sarvam sukhatmakam prabhu charna this should be our take home a message for today i just happened to look at it when we were just putting that book down every saturday we had we have started doing vivek chudamani we'll see that uh, verse number 139 in that vivek chudamani adi shankar chari is saying to identify the self with the not self this is the bondage for a man <laughs> so wrong identification misapprehension no matter which term we use he says atra anatma anne aham iti matir bandh bandh means bondage okay so let's look at verse number 73 बुद्धि पर्यंत संसारे माया मात्रम विवर्तते निर्ममा निरहंकारा निष्कामा शोभते बुधा 
बुद्धि पर्यंत संसारे इन द फिनल वर्ल्ड विच लैस्ट अंटिल सेल्फ नॉलेज बुद्धि पर्यंत संसारे माया मात्रम मियर एल्यूशन वी वर्तते प्रिवेल्स निर्मा डिवॉइड ऑफ माइनस मम मीन्स माइन डिवॉइड ऑफ माइनस निरंकारा डिवॉइड ऑफ आईनेस सी आई एंड माइन ओके मैं और मेरा सो निर्ममा निरंकारा विदाउट माइनस एंड विदाउट आईनेस निष्काम फ्री फ्रॉम पैशन अटैचमेंट निष्काम शोभते एक्सेल्स बुधा द वाइज वन the illusion of this phenomenal world prevails until self knowledge okay it's like a knowledge about yourself unless and until you experience who you are you are going to just keep on getting these kicks so the illusion of this phenomenal world prevails until self knowledge the wise one lives devoid of iness devoid of mindness and free from desires so in one line he is telling us how long this illusion is going to last for us and in the second line he is telling us how to end this illusion also so apprehension of the reality alone can destroy all misapprehension only when you see that it's a rope the misapprehension goes away when you see that you are the atma which is part of parmatma so you have to experience that it's it's not only some mantras we recite or some place we go to or just bow down to our guru this is this this is where the sadhana should take us the experience the anubhav of this only then this illusion of sansar can end permanently only with the direct perception of reality until then it's just a doubt so illusion can exist in our mind only so long as our we are not prepared to look at it intelligently so we need to review the world of polarity because right now we are sadhaks we have not reached to that level of ultimate freedom so we need to review the world of polarity with a sharp steady discriminative intellect so that we can recognize this illusory nature of the world which is made up of objects also thoughts also feelings also situations also we just take it for granted we think this is what it is but we got to use our sharp and a subtle intellect for it that's why he said buddhi paryante sansare or he talked about at the end shobhate buddha very powerful words even physically the worlds the world of names and forms is almost conclusively proved by physics and chemistry as having no basis at all if you talk to the scientists in the lab or a person who is a scientist of a chemical compounds will tell you that chemistry reduces all the names and forms into energy and what does physics declares it declares to us sir that all that i perceive are ordered by governed by the relativity of time and space 
So they have reduced it to that. Whatever we see, it's not that what it is. So in the presence of uh, intelligent observation, sansar can never stand. It only persists in our stupidity and it is nurtured and nourished only by our imagination. It's all imagination. Some individual imaginations and some collective imaginations. So in the acceptance of this illusory world of polarity, and from there comes the sorrows and sufferings, we really need to investigate into it. We need to inquire about it. That's what buddhi paryanta. Okay, or shobhate buddha. It is the ego sense in us which perceives the phenomenal world. Ego sense in us is the perceiver of the world of illusion. And the ego feeling in us is a sense of possession, mindness. Ego feeling, I own this, I have it. Okay, it's a mindness. So in short, the ego sense as the perceiver accepts the illusion of the names and forms are true and the ego feelings clings to the illusion with its possessiveness. Okay. It's mine, I get, I get attached to it. And a person who has transcended the ego has transcended both. That's why he mentions over here both nirmamaha nirankara. They go hand in hand. So in the perfect master, a wise person, a yogi, the ego has been removed entirely, permanently, by its very roots. And such a sage established in his self-realization excels not only among the humanity, but even among the gods. This is a devata. In the real sense, Devata. Akshayam gat santapam atmanam pashyataha mune kva vidya cha kva vavishwam kva aham deham mam itiva. Akshayam imperishable. Gat santapam free from grief. Atmanam self. Pashyata, seeing, Mune, the wise one. Kva vidya, Kva means where? Vidya is a knowledge. Vishwam, universe. Aham, Deham, I am the body. And before this was Kva, Kva in front of all of these words, so where? Mam means mine. Iti means thus, va means all. To the wise one who perceives the self as both imperishable and free from grief. Okay, so perception of the self is that we know it for sure that it never dies. Imperishable. Everything in this world is perishable other than that one thing. Right? One thing, which is that, what is that one thing? Paramatma. And Atma is part of that. So to the wise one who perceives, not only reads, perceives, that means the experience is there. The self as both imperishable and free from grief. There's no grief, no sadness, no hurt, no anger, no desires, nothing in that, in the Atma. Where do they all reside? In something which is going to perish sooner or later. 
It could be the mind, it could be the chit, it could be the body, it could be the intellect, it could be anywhere else, but not in the Atma. There's no grief in the Atma. There's no grief in the Paramatma. Because the grief is a blemish. And Atma and Paramatma, they are pure light. There's no flaw in it. So to the wise one who perceives the self as both imperishable and free from grief, then where is the knowledge? Where is the universe? Where is the feeling of the body I am? Or the feeling mine is the body? Okay. So he's continuing to paint the picture of a man of perfection. For students like us who want to know, we want to experience, we haven't experienced yet. We need this knowledge. So that's why Rishi Ashtavakarji is growing more and more eloquent. He is honestly feeling that in spite of his brilliant exposition, he has not communicated even a vague picture of the inner experience of the liberated one. Otherwise, he would have stopped. He thinks that he, we haven't gotten it yet. Because this, to this great Rishi, it was not a question of making a book bigger so that size looks better and it sells better. He just feels that we haven't gotten it yet. Because we misunderstand, in spite of hearing it again and again, we misunderstand that we are the body. And that is the very seed from which breeds all confusions of the mind. The minute we understand we are not the body, you will see that lot of this darkness will fall away. The destinies of the body become the destinies of the individual because of his extreme identification with his body. And that is a same thing with a sense of possessiveness, like a mindness, my house, my children, my this, my that. So that all comes towards all things related to the comfort and the happiness of the body. It starts from the body. So the mistaken identity that my body is myself sets me into a false relationship with the world around me. I understand there's a quick question by Pankaj. Pankaj, you can unmute yourself and ask at this point if you want to. Uh, yes, if Atma has no halchal, no, uh, no desire or uh, there is no loss of peace, then why do we say when people die, we say, oh, God, may God give them uh, atma ko santi deni. Okay, we use that. Uh, some Rest of these statements like are this. being used uh, not very correctly. Not very correctly. Okay, so shanti is uh, uh, basically when we talk about shanti, shanti is for the mind. Because that soul, uh, if a soul uh, has, has passed, uh, has become one with God, then definitely there's no need for a shanti. It's nothing but shanti. And if it has uh, left uh, with still some uh, uh, subtle body with it, so we are praying for that. So we just use the word Atma, but we don't really yes. mean Atma as a Shuddhatma. We are talking as a personality. So we are talking about mind. We are talking about the personality. Yeah, the mind, the chit, the buddhi, whatever has gone. Uh, okay. 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 Yeah. So, so atma, atma atma understanding or just a, um, a, it has become a common thing to say. So they are not... Yes. Uh, they are not talking about the scriptural language. They are talking about only a, a relationship language. So Jivatma. Most. Jivatma, yeah. yeah. But if Once you are going peace or no peace, what is the difference? 
peace or no peace? Uh, yeah, why do we pray for peace? You know? Why do we uh, because that is our ultimate goal? What is God? Nothing but peace. And our ultimate goal is one with God to attain that peace. Yes, that is for, but you are dead. So now whatever Atma is, is going wherever, are we asking for peace where it is going or where it has been? No, we are just praying. Actually, basically all these prayers are for our own self. Atma has gone. If you ask me, Atma or the Jeev Atma has left according to their own. They did their karmas. They are gone wherever karmically they need to go. Prayers are for the people who are left behind. And we want to be peaceful because if we keep on uh, crying about it, keep on feeling sorry for ourselves and the grief, then we don't, we cannot uh, do what we are supposed to do here. Okay? So by praying about peace, we don't get peace. If we pray that somebody else should get a peace, that doesn't work either. So these are some cultural uh, 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 things. That's all mm -hmm. it is. Okay. I see. Thank you. Yeah. So in this web of uh, delusory values, the individual suffers, and that's called the sansara. Okay. So when a person has realized the self, there's nothing more to know. That's what it really means. Ko vidya. I know. I've experienced it. It's only the Atma, nothing else. Then go with the That's what we learned in the Upanishads also. When the disciple asks the Rishi, what is that knowledge but knowing which all other knowledge becomes known? In the beginning of this scripture also, there was a question like that by, from Janak. What is that knowledge by knowing which all other knowledge has become known? And what is that knowledge now? That knowledge is the knowledge of the self. Knowledge of all knowledges is the knowledge of self. Because it's a light of consciousness. To the one who has awakened to the real, how can there be for him the perception of the unreal? And to him, where is the universe? So this is what he's trying to tell us. Then he says, Nirod adhini karmani Jahati jadhi yadi Manorathan pralapan cha Kartum apnoti atat kshanat Nirod Adine, control, etc. Adi means etc. Nirod, control. Karmani practices. So this means that really means that all the sadhana which we go through. Jahati leaves. Jadhi. One of a dull intellect. Jadhi. Jad means dull. Dhi means intellect. Yadi means if. Manorathan. Desires, pralapan, fancies, imaginations, kartum to do, apnoti, begins or arrives at atat kshanat from that very moment. No sooner does a man of dull intellect give up the practices of mental control, then he becomes a prey to desires and fancies from that very moment. So here is a verse through which this great Rishi is talking to an unprepared student and encouraging us to continue our sadhana. He says, don't give up. Don't think that you are already there now, that you don't need any vidya or you don't need any control or you don't need any sadhana. So, because as long as the vasanas are there, we are, we have a 
we are the one with a dull intellect. So done according to this philosophy, dull intellect doesn't mean that you don't have a degree. Dull intellect means you have a lot of vasanas. More vasanas, more dull the intellect. Because vasanas expressing in the intellect are called desires. And the desires expressed in the mind are called thoughts. You are all familiar with these terms. And the mind which is so agitated gets lost into its own fences and imaginations. That's why he said, Manorathan pralapan chakartum apnoti atat All of this will happen right away if you leave your sadhana. Don't fool yourself that you are realized. The instant we allow our mind to roam about, in the released mind would immediately jump into desires. And it will fly into fences, imagination. So early seekers uh, should never give up their regular practices of control at their body, mind, and intellect levels. Control is at all three levels. Regulating the immoral and unethical living at the body level. This is what we learned ever since we were little. Hey, Poonam has a question. Poonam has a question. Oh, okay. Yes, Poonam. Harshji, I was reading the explanation in the book. Of this, this he, verse? This verse? Yes, okay. yes, this verse. He said the idea expressed here is that for the ignorant person also, persisting as he does in the dual vision, practices of control of little avail. Since as soon as there is a lapse in his practice, he is dragged down to the mire of desires. Yes. So the implication is that self-knowledge is not a thing to be attained by practices of control. It already is and has to be realized as such. Yeah, yeah. That's so, exactly what I'm saying, that this is, we, we need to keep on doing our sadhana and then ultimately we'll experience it. Do not give up the sadhana. It's not because of the sadhana you will achieve the self-realization. It's not because of that. But sadhana is needed, otherwise more desires and the fancies will trap us. But here he said the practices are of no of, of little avail. The practices of control are of little avail. That, that was his, uh, he says, the practices of control are of little avail since as soon as there is a lapse, he's going to be dragged down. So, yeah. Yeah, to me, I, I, I really don't know what this author really means. But if you look at the, uh, the uh, direct translation, it says, no sooner does a man of dull intellect give up the practices of mental control, then he becomes a prey to desires and fancies. Yeah. So over here, so, the way I read it, that we sadhana is extremely important. Yeah. Somehow it feels a little twisted because it felt like he's saying it is not going to help you at all because the minute you stop it, it's going to just drag you down. Yeah, and but he says don't stop it. it. So what he's saying, don't stop it. <laughs> he said the minute you stop it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the minute you stop it, you're going to start having fancies and the uh, 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 desires. Mm. So that really means to me the way I read it that, hey, stay alert. Stay alert. Know what the problem can be. Because the minute we become relaxed, I mean, we all know from this, what happens in this world also, we take care of our body and the mind. The minute we become a little relaxed, we say, hey, it's okay. One day, extra calories or no exercise. What happens? Okay, we sleep. Okay. But, but um, one more question. 
Yes, Pankaj. Pankaj. If she says, uh, the idea expressed here is that for the ignorant person also, persisting as he does, in the dual reason, practices of control are a little avail. So if you have a dual reason, if you are already self-realized, then you are completely devoid of dual consciousness. In the same, in the 75, what Poonam was saying, the sentence before that he says, that man of self-knowledge is completely devoid of dual consciousness. So for him, there is no need to control. So for that kind of a person. Right, right. The controlling person, is... It's almost like a person who has already reached the rooftop doesn't have to go back on the staircase. staircase. Yeah. So I, I, I think I get... The idea that so don't what, yeah if you're yeah. already if you're climbing don't stop climbing yeah but if you have already combined climbed and reached the top then you don't have to climb again so the, the story here is if you are dieting then the minute you stop the diet you're gonna fall down but if it is your lifestyle then there is no need to diet anymore yeah yeah, yeah. Right. i guess that, that is that is how yeah, you can be. understand it that way yeah, that, yeah. i, I guess okay. that's what it is. yeah so self-knowledge self-control yeah. is built in the self-knowledge you don't have to repeatedly do it once you have self-knowledge isn't that what it's saying yeah, yeah. I mean, don't stop the sadhana. Just in simple words, don't stop the sadhana until you reach the goal. And how do you know you, you have reached the goal? You are devoid of all duality. You are devoid of the duality also. There's no churning in the mind also. There's all those qualities which we read, we have read in this scripture also. They are part of you. No fluctuation of the mind. No desires. You see God everywhere. You know that. Once you have experienced it, you know that. And he says, don't stop your sadhana a minute before that. Patatakshanat. Patatakshanat. Yeah. yeah. So it's almost like... Uh, uh, Like a plane is on the runway. It's just going very fast. No matter how fast the speed is in the plane, it's not going to reach its destination until it takes a vertical flight. Horizontal speed of the plane on the runway is not going to take the plane to thousands and thousands of miles away or up in the sky that high. So what he's talking about over here for a practitioner to take the vertical flight up. Remember that. And how is this vertical flight? Vertical flight through self upliftment is the only way to detach ourselves from the realms of delusion and mental illusions. If we keep on thinking that I am the mind or I have the mind, I have the intellect, I am so smart, I have so many degrees. It's only a horizontal flight, guys. Vertical flight is detaching from it. Just like Pankaj was saying, duality. That is all duality. Whenever we see that we are two, we are separate, there always will be a chance that I'm better or worse than you. So it's a vertical flight. So, or take off from this horizontal. So mental control is a means. It is the path. But the end is a self-realization, which is the goal. And that is called by awakening to the self. See, all these words do not get confused by it. They all mean the same thing. So he says, uh, the dull seeker, the ego is not ended. So if our ego is not ended, we are dull, we have a dull intellect. And ego really means, he says, the desires. 
so it's not a, we don't need to suppress the desires we need to get rid of the desires so the tranquil mind rendered temporarily peaceful as a result of spiritual practices it's only a run away here and there we feel peaceful we do some selfless work we feel peaceful we help somebody we feel peaceful we do our duties we feel peaceful they are all run away on this journey or you can say it's a pad from which the meditation must rocket up to the higher realm those are needed so in bhagavad gita what do we learn satvik ahar satvik worship satvik tap satvik daan right all of that has to be satvik but still it's only a runway we have to have a proper runway we have to have a speed also but ultimately we got to take that vertical flight into the higher infinite consciousness but the realization of the self only then we can complete our journey we need to transcend all this that's why you often hear in these books also and from other people also the supreme is not gained as a result of yoga the infinite is with us we have only to realize it just be just be so that's why it gets a little confusing lot of times if we got to just be why the sadhana the problem is that we really don't know how to just be we have been doing and doing and doing so that's why these rishis they keep on telling us hey do properly then ultimately you will know infinite is right here right now we cannot experience that so this just be or to realize ourselves is not because of the sadhana but it's definitely a preparation for it then the mind is calm intellect has been transcended detachment from all this duality all polarity you know who you are she okay. urmal ji has some question looks like okay sure go ahead urmal when the realized person reaches the top of the mountain and is uh, there realized one with god is does he have the danger of uh, uh, relapse because even if he has perfected and realized he cannot just stay stable now and say i'm done uh, i mean what what is it what else is he doing now that he has reached the top he can't what just sit there is, he just uh, what he does is just stay is connected that's all nothing else no goal left has reached okay. home has reached uh, home. how do we how do we test ourselves of course uh, in while living in the real world that we are like they don't call it uh, near near the top not the top but near the top uh, and not i mean if we feel we are connected with god how do we know how do we know uh, from our, our from our daily activities we can know okay. what is more important to us is it uh, self indulgence is more important to us or to help somebody is more important is uh, somebody says something to us uh, which is little painful can we just shake it off or does it stay inside us we absorb 
so we got to just look at our own uh, 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 life are we more and more peaceful do we remember god and connection with god more and more we okay. are we are joyful happy content under any circumstance like a inner joy we feel no matter what whether it's a good hair day or a bad hair day oh i have a bad hair day every day that's okay <laughs> <laughs> so it's like we are not our our happiness is not dependent upon what we own what we have or what we are called or where we are we are we know we have found the source of happiness so if we are like that yes we are climbing up you can go back to those notes of saptabhumi you remember yeah, those yeah. pages of mm -hmm. uh, 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 achievement go back mm -hmm. to that and see that where do you really stand most of the time it starts with the shubhicha shubhicha means uh, auspicious uh, desire do you really have those desires now you have desires but are they shub all of them or not so really starts from there as long as we have a mind we'll have the desires are the desires to help others or desire to just fulfill my own self so just i would say just to, i don't know when did we talk about but we did talk about during uh, uh, this lockdown uh, early on so i'm sure you urmil no i had the notes a couple yeah, months you have notes so to me, i think that's one way to just check ourselves because it's good to check ourselves where we are we cannot fool ourselves that oh we are self realized now we have studied five scriptures that's the point i was making it yes. that even one who has reached there can have a relapse so he should also do something yeah yeah <laughs> yeah no definitely actually once a person who has really reached there connected according to the scriptures you don't have a relapse i see because you have really it's gone immunity of you some that layer of you which had the chance to relapse is gone you have yes, transcended it so yes, relapse is not relapse is not for the atma relapse is for the personality layers and you have already discarded those so a person who has truly reached the chances of slipping down is a none but if we think if we just fool ourselves you no know, i have reached then sure there is okay because sometimes we get confused when we read the stories about vishwamitra or some other uh, 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 rishis okay sometimes those stories are to teach us a lesson also these great personality they take uh, this human form to give us a certain lessons too so they their own personality has been dissolved but they take the form like a parshuram he was a avatar but then we if we start dissecting his life according to our values we can find flaws those were only for that period of time to take care of certain situations in this world so we really cannot uh, a point fingers at the avatars we can only learn from the stories of the avatars okay yeah? but uh, uh, simply to answer your question urmil yes there is no slip once we are there and right now we need to go back on those seven stages of uh, development of our person uh, harshji we studied that in july oh in july okay it has been yeah. that many okay yeah. all right see in july go see. back please do re revisit your notes up so it's 11 25 26 so if you don't have any question i'll ask kamla to sing the bhajan and before that let me do the uh, shanti mantra and after kamla's bhajan again we will uh, i'm here to answer your questions okay om purnamada purnamidam punnat purnamudachyate पूर्णसे पूर्णमादाय 
पूर्ण में अवशेष्य थे ओम शांति 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 Our little kids, they are learning this mantra this week. The Saturday's class, 